Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Doris. I'm here to share with you about my stock account and today's market updates. The Federal Reserve rate cut expectations and uh, and the assistance from the other Federal officials and the S&P year to a record high for the end of the year. The U.S. stocks suffered intraday setbacks last week, but still, it, the market quickly regained the momentum. As investors enter the holiday weekend, outside world adjusted lower than expected inflation data, setting a firm bet on the Fed to cut interest rates in the new year. Seasonal factors are expected to generate more momentum in the last week of the year. And the final growth GDP was gross domestic product was 4.9% in the third quarter, down from both previous reports. The Commerce Department showed it is worth noting that the PCE data was revised to 3.1% from 4.0%, suggesting signs of a data of a slowdown in the growth of the economic pillar. But the high-frequency data showed the labor market remained healthy, with initial jobless claims back to back around two. 200,000 mark and a fall in mortgage rates starting to provide support for the housing market. So the November fall of PCE is seen that the monetary policy is showing some effects on the prices. It grew 2.6% year on year last month, falling below 3% for the first time since March 2021. And the core PCE was nearly 3% regardless of energy and food, as concern about inflation stickiness in the service sectors are not in the way. PCE um, continued to grow month to month, indicating that the consumption momentum res remains resilient. Oxford Economic Research Institute suggests that the November income and spending data is encouraging, and uh, at the same time, inflation um, is fading, so the U.S. economy is showing more and more signs of soft landing and resilience towards the harsh monetary policy environment. He analyzed that the further progress is needed to return the wage rate to nearly uh, 2% consistently. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell stressed that at his December meeting stressed that the labor market conditions may have come from the demand side. A series of data prompted agencies to raise their growth forecast for the quarter. Atlantis Fed GDP tool rise now to rising to 2.7% last week after hitting a cyclical low of 1.2% early November, above the line trend, long term trend line of 2.0%. Several Fed officials have continued to weigh on speculation over the past week, but the actual effect seems limited. Institutions have adjusted their forecasts, with Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase predicting that the Fed will raise interest rates at least, well, cut interest rates, excuse me, last at least five times next year. Treasury yields were under pressure, with the two-year note down nearly 12 basis points to 4.34% on the week, and the benchmark 10-year note falling to 3.9%. The data undoubtedly adds to the Fed's policy pressure, which is the exactly the opposite of last year. With inflation fall, set to fall further in the coming months, the rate cuts will get closer to reality. He said that the rate cut is too far in in March, and it may be several months before the Fed can fully believe that the inflation is falling, so that it may act as soon as May of the next year without unexpected circumstances. The three U.S. major indices have risen for a three weeks. The S and P five hundred. Won its longest winning streak since late 2017, and is less than 1% of a new high, while the Dow and Nasdaq had their best performances in nearly four years. But last week, there was a sharp move when stocks briefly plunged 2% amid heavy, heavy liquidation options. Spartan Capital Securities Chief Market 
at the strategist Carrillo said the rebound was primarily temporarily interrupted as the market was overbought, and the technical indicators were repaired and the market returned to the upward offensive. Merrill Lynch survey showed institutional optimism about the U.S. stocks at the highest level since January 2022. More than half of respondents expect the global economy to slow next year, despite a soft landing. The medium institutional cash ratio fell 4.7 percent from 4.7 percent the previous month. It was the lowest level since April 2021. In the industry sector, technology, banks, and small cap stocks were among the most crowded area of trading. David Wilson, chief equity strategist at Morgan Stanley, believes that the Fed may be leading the U.S. economy to its best point. If a soft landing is successfully achieved without triggering a rena, renewed acceleration in inflation, sectors like small ca- small cap stocks, which tend to be more sensitive to a change in interest rates and the economic outlook, could build on the spec- spectacular rallies that began in November. It is important that funds disagree near the year's highs, which may also be the cause for the stock index volatility. In the week ended December 20th, some outflow of U.S. equity funds took profits. According to the LSEG, data shows that the net outflows from the U.S. funds reached $10.45 billion in the last week, the highest level since October. At the same time, money market funds also saw a near sell-off of $25.54 billion, much of which appear to be reallocating assets at the end of the year. This is all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next episode.